everyone, this is Jennifer from Branch to Bloom, and I'm here today to talk to you about homeschooling and working from home. I've been getting so many messages on social media, especially on Facebook and Instagram, asking me, how do you do it? How do you work from home? My kids are out of school. They're going to be home for six weeks. Uh, how am I supposed to get my work done? I'm supposed to telework. I'm supposed to do my kids' schoolwork, and you're looking for resources, and you're all kind of freaking out. And I'm here today, hopefully, to reassure you a little bit and to help you through it. Um, my husband and I both work from home, and we homeschool our two boys who are nine and eleven. So I'm getting a lot of questions about what we should do for curriculum and what curriculum should we buy and how am I supposed to homeschool? So you don't need to fill out any declaration of intent forms. You don't need to look up uh, your state's homeschooling law because you're still enrolled in public school. Most of the schools are providing packets or virtual learning or e-learning or something for your kids to do. So you probably don't need to go out and buy a whole curriculum um, unless you're thinking that you're not gonna send your kids back to school after the closure, in which case that's a whole different thing. However, you probably are looking for some enrichment activities to keep your kids busy during the day. Um, some things that are gonna take a little bit more time and add a little more structure to your day. And for those things, I uh, have a bunch of really cool links and cool ideas that I found, and I put them in the description box. But the number one thing that I'm hearing fear about is juggling your time. And how are you supposed to have um, time to do your work at home that maybe your employer is requiring? Um, or if you're self-employed like me, you need to be able to get your work done. And also make sure that your kids are getting all of their schoolwork done. And I have eight tips to share with you about how we do homeschooling and working from home. So to start, what I do is I make something called my work list. And what I do is I just write down all the things that need to get done for all the members of our family in one big list um, under each person. And I say like what their physical needs are gonna be like exercise and making sure they drink water and uh, doing devotional time. And I include chores and home improvement projects and I include schoolwork. And normally I would include like our lessons and co-op kind of stuff, but obviously not right now because those are canceled. And uh, I also include uh, my work, anything that I need to get done. And then after I write everything out that I can think of, um, just like a huge mind dump on the paper, I go through and I circle just the things that are really essential. And I'm, I'm pretty careful about it. Like I try to only have a few tasks for each person per category. Um, like I would only have one or two or three things that I need to do for my home chores or one or two or three really important goals for our work. And so I will write those all out and and get it all set. And that is what I use to start kind of planning our week. So that is what I do for my first step. The next thing that I do is I have a morning meeting with my kids every morning. And if my husband isn't already at work then um, in his office, then I include him in that. And what we do is we just read our devotion for the day and I set the expectations for the day. So over breakfast, while my kids are eating, I will just read our devotional and then I'll say, okay, to each, each kid, um, these are the chores that you need to do today. And I have a list for them, that, but I, I talk them through it. I don't just hand them a list and expect them to be able to do it. Um, they're pretty independent kids, but they are only 9 and 11, so they still need a little more encouragement. If you have really young kids, um, this is still a great thing to do, but don't expect that you're going to be able to just hand them a list and, and have them do it on their own uh, like mine usually do. Um, you'll need to you know help them through it. but. At this point, I talk to my kids and I say, okay, you know, these are the chores I need you to get done today, and here's what we're doing for schoolwork. Um, and that kind of just sets the tone. I also will tell them if there's any expectations um, that I have about what I need to get done. So I might say, this afternoon, I'm gonna be shooting a video, and I want you guys to do your independent work during that time. And so let's do the stuff that you need my help with this morning. 
um, and why don't you go ahead and get started on this or go ahead and get started on that and kind of give them a little bit of direction. And starting out in the morning at breakfast with them seems to be the best way to get our day started off right. For our family, scheduling didn't work. And when I say scheduling, I mean the kind of schedule where you have like a bell schedule like at school where it's like at 7.30 we have this and at 8 o'clock we have this and at 9 o'clock we have this. I tried that for a really long time and it just made me so flustered and frustrated because we were never on schedule. I felt like a drill sergeant and I was always running around trying to force my kids to hurry up a task so that we could move on to the next thing and that's really not what homeschooling is about and I felt like it really took away from the fun and the flexibility that we have to dig deeper and to explore learning with them. Uh, so what I recommend and what works for us is doing a family rhythm, uh, which is more like a routine. So it's more like first we do this, next we do this, then we do this, as opposed to you know saying at exactly what time you're gonna do that. And it's kind of a little bit tricky to figure out how you're gonna build that for your family. But what works for us is to start with meal planning. So I will say, okay, we're gonna have breakfast at this time, we're gonna have lunch at this time, and we're gonna have dinner at this time. And then I kind of build our day around meal times and wake and bedtimes. And because those are sort of like, I think of them like concrete pillars in our day and everything else kind of flows around it. So. In the morning, uh, we have our morning meeting at breakfast time, and then in the afternoon, and then we do schoolwork after that. And then in the afternoon, um, more of the focus is on my, do, my doing my work. And so I, ha I give all my attention to my children um, while they're doing their schoolwork in the morning, and then I focus more on what I need to do for my work in the afternoon. And that kind of works for our family. I will um, put in the description box just a quick sketch of what our day looks like just so you can see it. But what works for us isn't necessarily what's gonna work for you. So I recommend just choosing when you're gonna do your meals. And maybe if you have really little kids, add in your snack times too, because you're gonna be preparing snacks for them. Let's be honest, they eat all the time. And, um, and then just plan your activities around, around that. And if your children have work that they need to do from school, um, that your schools are sending home, you can do that, plan that time in when it works best for your children. Um, and then you can plan enrichment activities and outside time and all the rest of it just around when you need to work. Uh, if your children are really little and they need all of your attention and you need to work more than just you know three or four hours in your day, um, it may be that like one parent, if you have a two-parent household, one parent could watch the kids in the morning while they're doing stuff and then in the afternoon you could swap or a family friend or um, when I was working when I, my kids were littler, I hired a mother's helper, just a young girl who would come over and she would just play with my kids so that I could get writing done. And that was really helpful to me and she really enjoyed it, made her feel grown up and she got a little bit of spending money. So those are some options um, as far as how you can make your family rhythm work around your work schedule and your kids' work schedule. So this isn't something that I do personally because I only have two kids um, and they're really close in age. They're less than two years apart. But a friend of mine told me about it and I think it's brilliant for people who have large families or who have children who are spread really far apart in age. And she called it the buddy system. And what she does is she has one of her older kids paired up with one of her littles. And so the older child is responsible for helping the younger child to get their list done. So when she does, um, a handing out of chores and school tasks for the day, she gives a copy of the littlest children's lists to her older child, her older children, and she pairs them up. So um, they're responsible that week for helping their little sister or brother do things like brush their teeth and get dressed and you know clean up their dishes and start on their schoolwork and and do the chores that they need to do um, and they do it kind of together and I just think that's a really neat idea so if you have a large family or your kids are spread far apart in age that might be something that works for you too so it's really easy when you work from home to just work a lot especially if you really like your job like I do 
Um, I sometimes make the mistake of thinking that I can just burn the candle at both ends. I can do everything for my kids. I can work myself to death. I have all these great ideas and I just work, 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 work. And pretty soon I am a complete mess and I am totally burned out and I'm not good to anyone and just getting out of bed is hard and everything feels hard. So learn this lesson from me. Don't think that you are superhuman and that you can do everything all the time without taking breaks, without taking care of yourself. And what I tell myself, I try to remember, is that if I work too hard and I, and I don't take breaks and I don't take care of myself, um, I burn out and then I'm not good to anybody. You know, I really want to be like the best mom I can be. I want to be the best spouse I can be. I want to be an amazing entrepreneur. I want to do all these things. Um, but I can't do any of them if I don't do things like drink water and sleep enough and exercise and talk to my friends. Um, right now, it has to be on the phone. But I try to make time every week just to talk to a friend, you know, meet up for a play date. And those things can feel like luxuries that you don't really deserve if you're like me. Um, but the truth is that if you don't take care of your mental health and your physical health, you're not gonna be really good at anything. So don't forget to take care of yourself. Super, super important. Don't try to make your home into a schoolroom because it isn't the same. And if you try to recreate a classroom at home, you are really just gonna miss out on the flexibility and great things about homeschooling and it will stress you out and it will cost you a bunch of money and it's not necessary. So just play to your strengths. One of the best things about being at home is that you can just sit around the table with your kids and you can read books together and you can explore their interests. Um, don't try to have them sit in like rigid desks and make them raise their hand. Uh, don't have a super strict schedule about when recess is, unless your children really need that structure, which most, most need some, but they don't need it to be quite so rigid. The reason that schools are like that is because they have to control all those kids in the classroom all day long. But at home, you don't have to make them do those things. So just relax and have fun with it and don't try to make it into something that it's not. So maybe it's the Montessori in me, but I just want to say that it's okay to follow your children's lead a little bit while you have them home from school. If they're really little and they don't have work that their teacher has given them that they have to get done, uh, or even if they do, it probably won't be a lot if they're young, then take this opportunity to observe your kids and see what they really love and try to create an environment that is a rich learning experience for them, just with the things that you have on hand. Uh, you could do some art projects, you could read books together, you could play games, you can go outside and just explore and see what you can find. Look, Listen for their questions and help them research those and it will be a really like memorable time for them. And don't get too hung up on feeling like you have to fill every minute of their day with educational apps or videos or curriculum because really what they'd love the most is to spend time with you. So try to set aside some time just to give them your attention and again just pay attention to what they're excited about and try to find some activities that will work great for them. I'm getting a lot of questions about technology and using technology at home and what are the best educational apps and how should I use uh, technology to teach my kids and are there any online school options for younger children and on and on and on. And I we're pretty low tech in our house, but I do think it can have a place, especially for older kids that uh, would like to research things or look up something interesting. Um, our kind of model in our house is that technology is a tool. And so if we can use technology in a way that helps us to learn something or um, in some other way that it's a tool rather than just technology as entertainment. And I do think that we should be mindful of how many hours or how much time we're spending uh, looking at screens, especially the littler, the littler ones. Uh, so just be mindful of that, um, but don't be afraid to use it a little bit, especially if you need just a few minutes of sanity. I think it's okay to sometimes use different forms of technology to help with the teaching process. 
I hope that these tips are helpful for you and that you are feeling more confident about this time with your kids at home while you're doing school. And I just wanted to let you know that in the description box below, there are a bunch of links for things, enrichment activities, and different things that will help you through this time period. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment for me. I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. And visit me on my website, branchtulum.com. I'll be adding more content over the next couple of weeks to help you with this journey. Thanks so much for watching.